Morristown Area High School, the home team Eagles up 47 to 14. Neil, what are your thoughts on the game? I mean, we've kind of heard some of them as, as the game's gone on, but this is know. ridiculous. I got to stay awake for the second half because uh, Norristown is just totally manhandling the, the Panthers. And I was talking to somebody here at halftime, and and they agree with exactly what Jason said and what we've all been saying is they have to get in these different players because down the line, down the road, you're going deep. If you go deep in the playoffs, you have tired people and you have people that may get in foul trouble. Uh, we've seen Wiggins get in foul trouble sometimes and Weldon the same thing. You got to have guys that are that are comfortable coming off the bench and into a scoring opportunity. Well, some of the uh, more exciting fireworks of the evening came from the hands of our own Jason Session, who at halftime took the ball, launched it into the bucket from half court. Look, made it made it look like it was a like a layup. That's why we have him on the staff. That's right. He's a, he's a, he's the only basketball player here on the uh, on the crew, and uh, he got himself a nice koozie. Did, you, you, make, you regularly make those shots. Quaker Town might want to sign you up. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> 49-14, Norristown starting right where they had left off. Nice give and go, two-man work by Wiggins and Green. I like to note that the regular starting lineup for the Eagles started the second half. It's a great observation. Maybe no, Coach McGee gives them a couple minutes here in the third quarter to, to maintain their chemistry and then perhaps starts to uh, to work in some of the less seasoned guys. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know why he's doing this, except to give some of the seniors like Weldon and Wiggins and Fowler a chance at senior night. But I, I would be, I'd be doing exactly what he was doing in the first half. Put in some different groups of people that aren't used to working together on the floor and see if they can adapt. And, and they, ha they did and they have. Well, there's five smiling Eagles faces out there. They're having a good time. And of course, tonight's not a bad night to pad your stats either. They're having their way with, uh, Quakertown, and if this game is a mirror image of the first half, they'll have 100 points tonight, possibly. Seems to be plenty of ball to go around tonight. Coach Keeler at halftime undoubtedly said, hey guys, let's not give them the ball any more times than they need it to beat us and cut down on some of the turnovers. And here they have their first easy option of the night. Scott Funk goes in for a bucket. And then intercepted on the back end, Weldon's pass goes into the hands of Joe Alibach. Quakertown's probably feeling pretty good about itself after this last 10 seconds. This is as uh, consistent as they've played. They scored five points. They've got to be happy. Norristown playing zone defense right now. Shot by Funk, the three-point shot. Hits the rim twice and then bounces out. It's been the story for the Panthers all night long. Green working it inside to Weldon. Kicked it back out to Wiggins, back into Weldon. Skip pass over to Maurice Allen. He comes off the glass. Fowler does an admirable job of trying to keep it alive. Quakertown ends up with it in another fast break opportunity for Quakertown. That was Ali Galami. He's got seven points tonight. Seven of the 18 for Quakertown. Norristown holding a commanding 51-18 lead here in the third quarter, five minutes and 11 seconds. Although here in the third quarter, it's been all tied up at 4-4. This is the starting five from Norristown, as Jason mentioned. Three minutes have been taken off the clock. In the second half, they work the ball inside. The jump hook thrown up by Steve Hendricks. Rebound for Norristown. Green into Fowler, who looks like he's going to dunk every time he does that. I don't, I don't know who Marcus Green passed that ball to. All four guys were standing right next to each other, and they just ran towards the basket. I don't think Marcus cared. I don't think so either. It doesn't matter. He just throws it up, and one of the Norristown guys come down with it. Jason, who's impressed you so far tonight for Norristown? I think Marcus Green has really stepped up his game and become a scorer tonight. And I know Maurice Allen, he's probably going to lead the game in scoring tonight because he's come out with the hot hand. 53-18, 4.25 left to go in the third. Scott Funk with a three-point shot defended by Eric Wiggins, but Funk hits the three. That's his second three-pointer of the night. And he's got eight points. That's the best look Funk got the whole night. 
And Wiggins was all over him. Another coat of paint on that ball, and uh, Wiggins might have blocked it. Weldon trying to create his own shot. Fowler's down there to pick him up. Allen tries to go across to Wiggins. Ricochets off his hand. 53-21, four minutes left to go. The Eagles are getting a little sloppy here. And I'm, and if it continues like this, Coach McGee will call a timeout and settle them down. That would be a wise move for him. You don't want to let, let them get carried away. They are up quite comfortably with a 32-point lead. But Quaker Town's making it too easy. Scott Funk with eight and Galami with seven lead the scoring for Quakertown. They're the only ones with more than one field goal tonight on the floor for Quakertown. Nice pass inside, finally, Fowler. Gets the ball up and over the rim. There it was. He was warming up for it. A good look on that one. Nice job. Green getting the ball to Fowler where he could finally get up. Galami up and under. Nice defense by Fowler, but Galami savvily gets the ball up over his hand. He's got nine tonight. Back down the other end, Weldon right to the basket. No one in his way. Grabbed his own rebound and put it back in. Weldon is tenacious on the boards. He's tough. Weldon stands at 6'2", but really plays more like a 6'7" because he's solid. Nice job inside. Green trying to get that loose ball, but he knocks into Mike McFadden. That's Marcus's third foul tonight. And Danny Evans with the right to check in. Danny Evans has played extremely well this season. Nice to have depth with your ball handlers. Jason, who are the Eagles going to look to in the postseason to come off the bench? Off the bench, I should hope Damian Solomon, Milan Dean, and Danny Evans. Those three guys should step it up? Those are three guys that are definitely going to come off the bench and provide a spark for Narstown. Milan Dean, he's got a good all-around game. He can shoot the jumper and he can drive to the hole. Damian Solomon, he's all, he just hustles, plays good D, jumps on the ground for loose balls, and he can, and he can knock down the shot around the basket. And Danny Evans, he's a backup point guard. He'll come in to give Marcus Green some relief, and he can also knock, and he can also knock down the jumper. Excellent assessment of the bench talent that Norristown's going to carry into the playoffs, Neil. To piggyback what Jason just said, I'll tell you somebody who's overlooked on that bench. And he's on the floor right now, number 32, Daryl Johnson. He's got athletic ability just coming out of his ears. And he's one of those players that a visiting coach may overlook because he's deep on the bench sometimes. But when he gets out on the court, he does his job. And I'm telling you, down the stretch in the playoffs, Daryl Johnson sh should be and could be a real threat for this Norristown squad. Johnson had the start tonight. He's a senior. They work the ball into him on the baseline, him and Evans working it across. Nice job being patient for this Norristown half-court offense. And Dean from the baseline knocks it down, knocks the three down. 60 to 26, two minutes left to go in the third. The second and third units for Norristown are really doing a great job. Quakertown struggles once again. Beautiful job on defense by Dean. Gets the ball up to Johnson. Neil mentioned his athleticism. He showed it there by collecting the ball and being able to keep his body in control enough to get that shot off. Four players in double figures tonight for the Norristown Eagles. Unbelievably balanced scoring. Marcus Green, Maurice Allen, Milan Dean with 11, and Brad Weldon with 12. Funk, Funk with his third three-point shot here in the second half. He's heating up a little bit. He may actually, by the end of things, make this game look semi-respectable. He's got 14 on the night. We mentioned before, him and Galami are the only two players really on, that can score. Danny Evans trying to answer back with a three of his own, long rebound to Maurice Allen. Jason, who do you think are the best two defensive players for Norristown on the whole team? On the whole team? First of all, I have to say Eric Wiggins for the phenomenal job he did on Matt Carroll, one of the leading scorers in the area. And the second, I'd have to say Marcus Green because he's lightning quick. He always makes good decisions, and when it comes down to it, 
I think he can stick anybody. Looks like he has six or seven steals on any given night without even trying, really. Daryl Johnson at the line makes his shot. Who do you think is the strongest uh, rebounder on the Norristown team? The strongest rebound, the strongest rebounder would have to be B.J. Weldon because he, he comes out, works hard every day, practice, works hard every day, comes to the games, pulls down double-digit rebounds almost every night, and that's... That's his job, and he does it. He does a great blue-collar job pulling down the boards. Daryl Johnson makes his foul shot there, 64-29 in the last minute here of the third quarter. I think one of the uh, one of the one of the good things about having Jason on our team is he's he's a basketball junkie. He goes to practices. We we don't get to the practices, John, but. He gets to see these guys practice, and I have to agree, looking at Brad Weldon at practice, he, he hustles up and down that court every single day as Funk tries another one. He hustles up and down the court every day, and he gets the job done, and he doesn't look for a lot of accolades. He's a quiet guy. He's not, he's not, he doesn't flaunt it, but he knows that he's doing the job. Funk in rhythm gets the shot off. Alibach tries to get the rebound. He's not afraid to mix it up down there. Some elbows flying with him and Milan Dean. I'm sorry, that was Daryl Johnson. Brad Weldon is somebody other teams should not overlook. Just because he always hits the boards and most of his shots come around the basket, he can shoot the outside jumper. Consistently night in and night out, he brings his A game to the court and does a nice job getting a lot of buckets down in the paint where he's got to work extra hard. Now, Jason, who would you consider the best outside shooter, maybe a three-point threat for Norristown? If you were scouting him for another team, who would you say you really got to watch for the three-point three shot? Well, the best three-point shooter on the team is Brahim Brooks. He can he can spot up and knock down the J from anywhere. He's He's been a little off tonight, but one person who mainly does most of the three-point shooting is Eric Wiggins. He can always throw the ball down into the post, and they usually kick it out to him, and he'll knock down the three consistently. Third quarter scoring summary, 17-15 in favor of uh, Norristown, so... Quaker Town kind of evens it out slightly with Scott Funk shaking the funk a little bit, hitting a couple three-point shots here in the third quarter. Going to make it look semi-respectable. But it's 64-29. to 